Hello and welcome to lesson seven of the Twilight Dreaming Quilt. We're on to the bottom row now, which is our garden bed scene. We've got our cute little bunny rabbit there and we've got some pretty little flowers that we've made using a cathedral window technique. So that's our technique for this week. So let's get started. In the usual way, print out your pattern sheets and trace out your applique shapes and iron them onto your background square just in the usual way that we've been doing every week. You could start doing your stitching around the edge before we did the flowers and that's just using your zigzag stitch or your blanket stitch. At the moment um, I'm just in the process of working out a pretty special little um, quilting design to go onto the rabbit's body. So what you would do with that, it's going to look something a little bit like this and you, it will be marked onto your pattern sheets. So trace that onto the rabbit's body before you iron the rabbit's body onto the background square. So our little cathedral window flowers, they're going to start off looking like this to begin with. And to do this, you're going to need to have some squares. So you will need to have, well, first of all, choose three colors. There's three colors there. So you're going to need your outside piece. You're going to need a piece that makes that fine line there like we have for the purple and then a square for the center. So for the outer edge and that little purple piece there, you're going to need four two inch squares per flower. So we're doing two flowers, so you're going to need eight in total. You're going to need eight squares of your fabric that go around the back, uh, around the edge. And then for the centers, you only just need the one square in the center. So to start with, we're going to cut our squares. So if you've never cut squares before, I'm just gonna quickly show how to do that. So first of all, we're just going to cut these off one edge of our 25 centimeter or your um, fat quarter. And to do that, first of all, I'm just going to straighten up one edge. To straighten up the edge, I'm just going to line it up on the board. I always like to put one line level on one of the lines on the board. Trimming off the edge, just to get it nice and straight first of all. And just like I say every week, I'm showing how to do it for a right-handed person, so if you're left-handed, just reverse what I'm showing you. Then I'm lining up over this side, so I'd like to put my straight edge on the left side, and you can either use the lines on your board, I always like to line both of them up anyway, like that, and I'm going to cut a two-inch strip. I'm actually going to need to cut two two-inch strips from this piece of fabric to make sure that I get my eight two-inch squares. like that and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put them on top of each other just to make it a little bit quicker for cutting line them up on top of each other line it up on a line on the board and then I'm just going to lining up a line there and there and I'm going to cut that I'm actually just going to continue using the lines on my board to cut the two inch squares there's one, two, three, and four. So now that we have got our squares, to make up one cathedral window, we need four squares. And then with our purple ones here, we need another four squares. But what we're going to do is we're going to press these in half like that on the diagonal. So I'm just going to come across to the iron now and I'm just going to press each one like that. So I have my pieces all ready to go. And just one thing I wanted to mention about the cathedral window. Um, I've always been a little bit fascinated by the cathedral window but I've always found it that it's a little bit complicated to do. So this is a different way of doing the traditional technique. This is more of a modern, quite easy way to do cathedral window. So to prepare for our cathedral window, what we're going to do is we're going to take a triangle that's been pressed and we're going to place it into a corner of our outer square. So just like that, lining them up so that we have got our raw corners all facing in together. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew them right sides together. So we're going to go like that. We want to make sure that's nice and accurate. So what I like to do is first of all line my triangles up and then I'll put my piece on top. So everything is right sides together at the moment. And then I'll get this one here organized and then I'll head over to the sewing machine to sew these. At the sewing machine I have a size 70 universal needle on, I've got my neutral coloured thread and a quarter inch foot on and my stitch length is set at 2 just like we normally do when we're doing piecing. So we're going to start sewing, start sewing with some long threads at the end and with this one here I like to actually do a little reverse stitch at the end. That's just to keep it nice and secure on the edges and you'll see why when we actually cut it into the shape of a flower. If you do want to pin, you can pin. And then here's my next one again. I always just like to have a little peek underneath, make sure everything's lined up as best as it can. It is a bit fiddly because we're using smaller squares but if you were to make this you can use any size squares to make these cathedral window blocks and just depending on how many squares you make would be how many you know the size of what your quilt or cushion would be. And so I'll just cut that apart there. So open out and then press the seams open and now I'm going to sew them right sides together across the middle seam. Once again you can pin that if you like. If you're confident enough to just hold that in place you can also do that too. That's the start of our cathedral window. Here's my four squares sewn together. I press the seams open and this is when the magic happens. Because we now have our triangles here and they're loose and our edges are on a bias grain, this is now flexible and we're going to be able to bend those edges over and get that lovely curve. So what we're going to do is our middle square, we're going to position that on top but we want to hold that in place with a little bit of glue. So you can either use your sew line glue pen, you may have Roxanne's glue based. If you don't have any of that, you can use just a normal craft glue, just as long as it's water soluble and it's not going to leave any marks on your fabric. So make sure you test first. But what I'm going to do with this one here, I'm just going to put some glue in the corners and a couple more dabs here and there but definitely the corners that's very important and then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to position that on the edge all right in the center like that and then you're going to see that your purple there the triangles that's just that little bit bigger and what's going to happen is we're now going to fold those edges over so once our glue has dried we're going to fold those edges and stitch them at the sewing machine Set your sewing machine up with a thread to match the curved piece that because we're going to stitch on top of that now. Attach your open toe foot and just have a normal stitch length on with your normal size 70 needle. This can be a little bit fiddly to sew. If you are a beginner, make sure you do a practice one first. So, to start sewing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I like to start with my needle at the top and I'm right in a seam and I like to start with long threads also because we're going to pull those over to the back so threads at the back and then I'm going to curve my first edge over like that something that'll make it a little bit easier for you to sew with is um, either a nice big pin or you can use the tailor's all I often use this one here I'm going to put my machine down to quite a slow speed because we want to take this one nice and slow so we want to start stitching onto our purple piece there. 
And I like to use my open toe foot so that I can really see where I'm going. Just taking it nice and slow. As I'm approaching the top, I will then bend my next edge over. I did have a little practice with this, um, pressing it to begin with. So you can have a try of that. I actually prefer folding it over as I go. And I'm probably gonna just do one more stitch up to the top there. And then I'm gonna pivot and onto my next edge. And when we get to the top, we're just going to finish with long threads once again. And we're finishing with long threads because we're just going to pull those threads through to the back. So once again, like, like we've done before, we just pull on those bobbin threads and pull the top thread through to the back. So do that to both of those and then we're on to the next step. And there's our completed cathedral window block. So you can imagine if you made lots of these and joined them together they'd be quite stunning. It would make a beautiful quilt or cushion. Now if you did find that a little bit too tricky, a bit complicated, you can always just repeat the flower here um, or use the one that's in block four. It's that flower but it's a little bit bigger and you can just put it in place of those circles there. But to continue on with our cathedral window flower, all you need to do is trace this circle here onto fusible web and then we're also going to put another circle in the centre so I've traced that onto fusible web. And then what I'm going to do is just iron that onto the wrong side of my cathedral window block. And then I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to iron it in place onto my background fabric square. So there's our flower all cut out and then I'm just going to applique or iron a circle onto the centre of that. That is going to be a little bit thick um, but just make sure when you then iron that onto in place onto your background square because it's a little bit thick use a cloth or an applique mat or some baking paper over the top because sometimes I find when there's any raised surfaces on a shape if there's any marks on my iron it wants to come off onto the fabric so just making sure you keep your fabric nice and clean. To finish that off, all I did was my little zigzag around the edge of it. If you're doing your blanket stitch, you would blanket stitch around the edge. When it comes to the circle in the centre, there are quite a few layers of fabric and it's quite thick. So I thought rather than zigzag um, or blanket stitch that, I stitched around the edge with a straight stitch. And I actually just kept stitching around the edge um, about three times to make it nice and secure there. Next step from that is to work on um, doing the whiskers and the little eyelashes on our bunny there. So once you've finished all of your applique, that's the next thing that we're going to move on to. I've actually used a straight stitch, a triple straight stitch on my sewing machine. So I'm going to quickly show you how I did that. 
To show the detail on the rabbit's face, I'm going to use a triple straight stitch. Most of your machines will have this. This is actually um, a stretch sewing stitch. And what it does is it moves backwards and forwards as you sew. So it's something um, that you will need to give a little practice for just to get used to the stitch before you start sewing. So to start sewing, what you would do is have your triple straight stitch on and a small stitch length of two. I'm just using a black thread, just black brisant on the top and on the bobbin this time, just to prevent any tension problems from the thread coming to the top. If you like to tie your threads off at the back, start with a long stitch, but I'm just gonna show a little bit of a trick here for anyone that actually has an embroidery machine. So my machine is um, a brother embroidery machine. And I thought of this idea, whenever we go to um, start sewing, we leave our threads that little bit longer. And as you start sewing, it just pulls the stitch down to the bottom. And this is the way I do it. I always just make sure that my thread is um, out towards the front there and I'm going to start sewing. So I start sewing, there it goes, it takes my thread and then back into um, my stitch. So you can see it goes forwards, backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, just like that. If you did need to um, pivot to um, get around a curve, just working very slowly, but I've just finished now. So I'm gonna finish my stitch in a forwards motion if you did want to leave long threads, this is where you would pull it out of your machine with the long threads, but I'm just going to finish off there like that. My machine's doing an automatic tie-off and it's pulling the thread down to the back. So you can see, there's my cute little whiskers on my bunny. To finish off your block once your applique is complete, it's the same way that we always do. Make your quilt sandwich, hold it together with some safety pins, do your outline quilting first of all, then your echo quilting, and then you can do some free motion detail on the butterfly. We've got our little antennas there on our snail. And we are going to have that special quilting pattern that you'll be able to trace onto your applique shape before you iron it onto your block. And I'm going to design that so that you can easily stitch that with your walking foot attached. So you don't have to do it free motion, it's going to be an easy design for your walking foot. So that's it, that's our block seven complete. And uh, we hope you enjoyed that one and are all excited for block eight. Bye now.